This is Thank You Mama Weekly Lessons for Mothers All Around the World. Hello and welcome to Thank You Mama. My name is Anna Tider. My guest today is Adela Mehic Janic. Adela is originally from Bosnia and Herzegovina. She moved to Vienna seven years ago. She is a businesswoman, female tech leader, speaker, and a mentor. She works at an executive level of the software company Mavoko and serves as vice president of the Female Leaders Network of the Executive Academy at the Vienna University for Business and Economics, as well as the vice president of Business Women of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Adela, welcome. Thank you, Anna. Great to be with you. Very excited to have you here. You're also <laughs> mom. I'm also a mom. A mom of yes. one girl, <laughs> of a three-year-old yes, girl. A three-year-old girl. She is at the moment at the daycare. As we mm -hmm. speak, she's at daycare. And as soon as we finish this uh, podcast, uh, we are going to pick her up and go and see some of our friends and their kids. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, let's advertise Vienna a little in Austria. Most of kids in Vienna go to daycare. And yes. if you're lucky, you get free daycare that's uh, close yes. to home and women can go back to work, which women in America are very jealous of. Um, uh, to Vienna, I know some of the, I have some of the American friends, colleagues uh, that moved to Austria and they are not coming or they're not planning to go back. So you are originally from Bosnia. Tell me a little bit about your journey and how you ended up in Vienna and where you are right now. True, that's that's a good question. So I come from the northern western part of Bosnia and Herzegovina. So basically I was born over there. So I grew up there. I went to, you know, a, a primary school. I went to a gymnasium over there to Velika Kradusha. So that's the major city uh, next to my village. And I definitely wanted to do something out of my life, I would say. I wanted to do some something. I felt this need, but I would never know how to articulate it. You know, I, I, I was top the student in my class. I was, you know, I loved going to school. I loved you know, studying. Just give me the notes and I will, you know, memorize them over the night. And tomorrow I am, I am, I'm ready. And along the way, so I didn't know nobody studied before in my, you know, like women didn't go to study right in my family mm -hmm. the first person that went to study in my family was my oldest brother who also studied the, the electrical engineering in Sarajevo so we always in a competition in a, in a healthy one you know brother and, and sister then when I was thinking about the university I was like well either the medicine medical studies or the electrical engineering and I thought like medical studies that's a lot of memorizing again so like oh, mm -hmm. that that will be heavy and I've decided you know like Following the oldest brother, I decided to go for the Faculty of Electrical Engineering and to be a little bit different, I decided to go for the telecommunications, so a very different department that he did. I was one of the top students over there and, and he was very, very proud of that. And of course, for him, you know, finishing and I starting there, he was very, very, you know, super proud of that. Pr proud moments in our family. How did I came to Vienna? That's a good question because I felt in Sarajevo after my first and second job that like, is this it? You know, is it is this it? Is that why I, you know, dedicated all of my life and all of the years like studying and being top and then that's it. So I can go work in this company or that company and then, you know, I'm not ready to retire. So I, I mean it in a most beautiful way. So it's like, okay, but there is more out there in the world. And as a as a girl, so as a, as a child, I remember that once I asked myself, I was really frustrated, and I asked if I am going to ever go out of this village. You know, mm -hmm. I was crying there, and then I, and my family was like, yeah, laughing a little bit in a good way. So like, okay, you know, but I was like, am I ever going to go out and see the world? Right. So is it is, it, is this it? Is it like small and and tiny and and that's all? So I had this quest, you know, and it was like this this need to go out and see. And that opened up with Vienna, basically. So where we, my husband and I said, we leave everything behind. We pack our stuff, which we basically did. So we decided to come to Vienna as students because that's the, the easiest way to come here because we are non-EU uh, EU country. Uh, so you cannot just come here and live here or work here. You need a work permit or you need a student permit. 
So we decided to for go to, for that way, for the student permit, uh, to come here, to try it out with some of the savings and, you know, learn the language. So our idea was that we, you know, immediately start learning the language, connect with locals or like connect with the network, connect with people here that we know and can recommend us through and have the possibility to meet the companies, right? To, you know, present ourselves, to present our CV, to present, you know, what we wish and want to do. And that uh, seemed to be a good uh, seemed to be a good move for us. It was a tough mo- uh, tough decision to make because you have to leave uh, way out of your com- comfort zone, and you have to leave things behind and come to a new environment. But what life taught me along <laughs> I'm only thirty seven years old, but what life taught me along the way is that. When you are honest and open and curious, usually it it, um, comes back at you in a similar proportion. And And courageous. Yeah, courageous. Yeah, Yeah, it it comes at you. When you are brave and just jump in and swim. You know, I met a lady on on a bus ride from Sarajevo to Vienna and we were talking. We were just talking. Mm -hmm. She was, you know, left Bosnia with small kids as a refugee during the Bosnian war. So they settled here. They have a nice life. And, you know, we connected on a human. And I I never thought about her, like what I've studied and what are my aspirations and so on. But I talked to her about like, just like the two of us are talking now. Mm -hmm. Uh, We are trying this. We would like to give it a try. You know, we want to move here and there. And she said, well, yeah, I might have a solution for you. And <laughs> throughout the life, I had a similar, a few similar experiences like that, where people, uh, without you know, you know, with, where people actually opened, let's say, uh, their cards, and they said, like, yeah, I'll help you, I'll mm-hmm. help you, I'll, I'll make that for you, just when they have actually met me, you know, mm-hmm. without. That's uh, amazing. Um, so tell me, what do you do exactly now? So I work in a very interesting field. It's called the Internet of Things, which is uh, which means uh, having everything and anything in the world connected, be it through a SIM card, uh, like a vending machine or the fridges or whatever, you know, the, the, the cameras, the, the apartments and so on. So everything and anything being smart. I think that's that's the uh, good description of it. And the telecommunication companies, they have a very important role to play in that uh, ecosystem. Because they provide connectivity, right? You have always, you know, the device, the, the the hardware part, and then you have the connectivity, and then you have, you know, the cloud, which will process this information in a certain way. So that's where I stayed for a couple of years. And recently I moved into strictly business and, and sales at the software company. So I basically sell, uh, exited a little bit out from the, uh, from the telco, moved into the software, because now there's almost every, anything is, is a software. But uh, the good thing is that I am still working in the telco industry. I'm still serving. So my customers and clients are the you know, and partners are in the telco industry. Adela, let's talk about mom. I forgot mm-hmm. to ask you her name. What is her name? My mom's name was Fadila. Fadila, okay. Would uh-huh. you tell me about her? Well, I, as I told you prior to this interview, so my mom passed away in... November 1993, mm-hmm. in a very, very tragic incident in front of our eyes. Oh, so no. That was in the middle of the war? Yes, just yeah. when the, the war in the northern uh, part of mm. Bosnia started to really, uh, you know, start to be getting worse and worse. So in the middle of winter, I remember it was really a lot of snow, crazy lot of snow mm. everywhere, so... Not something that you today have to see, but uh, she passed away in a, in a split of uh, a few minutes, and then you, in the morning you see her, and then in the afternoon you don't see her anymore. Mm. Uh, she was the you know everybody loved her. You know she was like uh, yeah the one that took care of everyone. We have five kids. You know she had five kids. Yes, and and okay. and one. Uh, the the oldest oldest died as a baby as a child of fever mm-hmm. so it would be uh, in, in practically mm-hmm. it would be six so and as you know from, coming from uh, uh, you know the Balkan world uh, a little bit as well 
And you know that women are for everything. So you do take care of the kids. You do take care of, you know, elderly. You do take care of the house. You do take care of, you know, uh, mm-hmm. animals, farms, uh, mm-hmm. everything that comes around. So that's your responsibility. And that's what my mom did. Uh, you know, she managed to to do all of that. And I still to, the, to this day, I don't know how. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm trying. I'm very puzzled. I'm very puzzled how she did all of this because she had very, very little support from my dad, very little support from his family, and Mm -hmm. very, very little support from her family due to some reasons, but also, you know, the distance and like very far away. So I'm very puzzled how she did it. And every now and then before I became a mom, I used to say to myself, like, if my mom managed with five kids, I would, Mm -hmm. I should be able to manage with one. (laughs) You don't compare those things, but mm. uh, it's something that uh, I, I have learned over the over the course of life. Yeah. Uh, that's very different. So my mom was, you know, our, uh, the one that gave everything for everyone else, but including us, uh, but took care, a very little care about herself. Mm. In a way, mm. I don't, and we will come probably later to that, but I don't remember my mom sitting I don't remember my mom going out with her friends. I don't remember her taking time for herself. I don't remember her saying like, look, take care of on your own. I'm out, you know, for an hour or two, I'm going to go and see my mom and spend time with her. But, you know, because we were very little, you know, we we had, she had kids after kids, uh, one after another, you know. And uh, I am now a year older than my mom when she died. (gasps) She was so young. She was very young. She got married very young. How old was she when she got married? Uh, was he? Was she eighteen? Little, mm. uh, not not even not even uh, about twenty twenty one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then she had so kids. She, then she had kids, as you said, one yes. after the other, took care of yes. everything and everybody. Yes. Yes. And then she yes. passed away. Then she passed away, and then we all left with what? our with my dad. Was that was that a war? Did no, you... she had a good. Uh, she had an accident in the in the um, in the backyard. Oh, no, oh, sorry. Severe one, very severe one. We mm-hmm. uh, her body was all over the place. I okay. would say that. Yeah, and you see so... that as a kid, okay. not even seven years old, and you were seven, smallest, not even seven, and oh, my God. yeah. That's a lot to process and to live with. Yes. No. Yes. How did but you my... how did you manage <laughs> how did you deal with it? Well, I have younger sister and I have younger brother. So my youngest brother was two and a half. So for me, you know, I got to see her for for seven years at least, almost seven years. My brother, who he doesn't remember her at all. He's too small. He was two and a half. And my sister was five, so she was um uh, she does remember something, but not not many things. Did you have any support to process this, or was it just you and your family? I mean, you and your brothers and sisters and your dad? Just us. Okay. And it was the middle of the war, Anna. Yeah, I know. We just, after that, we moved away. So we moved from our house to my grandma's house yeah, to yeah. the uh, next house in the end of the village, and the next one, the next one, and then we somewhere... Uh, we settled and stayed there until the end uh, of the war in 1995. Mm. So you don't... Yeah. And the thing is, uh, so in our surrounding, or I have said, is it the culture or is it like the the, env- the way I grew up, you don't deal with these things. Mm-hmm. As you can see with uh, with the war, it's like war is war is a, is a trauma. It's a traumatic. So mm-hmm. it is, I used to say like... Um, you know, we were lucky because at the end of the day, yes, we were because, you know, I, my, my father is alive, you know, and, and, and he got to, you know, uh, take care of us and he didn't had to go to the war so he could take care of us. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's a very traumatic experience. And as you know, when the war stopped, uh, so we all came back home and, and continued where we stopped. That's that's the thing. There was no processing time. No processing. Right? No, no, not and then whatsoever. We, we didn't dealt no. with it. No, it was just like these are the winners, these are the losers. Continue with the life. Pick up where you stopped. You know, we were lucky to come home and 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 have a house that was in there in place, but everything out 
is was taken from it. So there was just like, like outside of it, but completely empty. So I don't have toys from my as a child. I don't have any pictures as a child. I don't have zero. Basically, there's nothing. There's also nothing related to my mom. So it's just like the mm-hmm. the the few you know memories and few things that I have in my hand. And often I I talk to other people and I say. Like how, why don't I remember more of my childhood? Mm. Because it, it, I should, right? Mm-hmm. Because, you know, I was not that, uh, you know, I was not two years. I was almost seven. So, but there is, I I don't, <laughs> didn't study much of the brain, the, you know, of it, but it had to do that in order for me to survive, right? Yeah. It was just yeah. pure survival mode. We don't talk, you know, it's like, it's not, yeah. you know, thriving or whatever it, it is, but it was just basically surviving to make sure that you, you know, or at least the the basic needs are met, and then over the last years when I became a mom, then it it came up, Anna, mm. because, mm. because then it you, I could not go away from it, right? Mm-hmm. It mm-hmm. was facing me, and yeah, I could I, at the first time in my life I had the opportunity to I had the time and resources to face it, of course with the support of people that I have worked with. Right. Mm. So it was, I cannot do it on my own because I get stuck in this. Like you, you, you go down and you need someone that that, you know, lifts you up. So mm. I just continued. Basically, I was just doing I told you I was doing great in school. I was doing great in at the university. I was doing great on all, on all these aspects. But I, I have blocked all that part of my life. It's just I just like packed it in one uh one department put it away and then like say okay well i need to i need to move on i cannot and and in general in my family so the attitude uh on on my father's side specifically it was always we we are the survivors you know Mm -hmm. all the stories that were shared throughout you know from my grandma you know they they talked about years of hunger right so Mm -hmm. when they didn't have what to eat and uh so basically those are the stories that I was, uh, you know, brought up with, right? So that like of a struggle and working hard and, you know, surviving and moving forward and so on. So this, this is, this was my upbringing. So, and there was no time for, you know, emotions or being emotional or processing what is happening to you, but it's, it's always time to go further and move further and, and just, you know, move. Mm -hmm. Adela, now I really would love to learn from your mom. You were very young when you lost her, so I'm curious what what did you manage to learn from her? Well, she was very fast. They would say she would turn around and the lunch was ready. She would oh. turn around, you would have a coffee. She was always welcoming. She was always laughing. She was always, you know, uh, you know, we always had guests. Our our house was always full. And that's one of the things that I can say that I have picked up from her. And she and my father were very similar in that. Mm-hmm. You know, my father to this day, it's always a full house. We just came back from uh, holidays, a few days in, in Bosnia. And there was no hour when someone was not there. Right. Mm-hmm. So it was always busy. It's, it's, and, and our house is like that. It's like you cannot pass it no matter which part of the you know village you're going to. It's always there. Mm-hmm. you know the crossroads so you always pass it through you know you always call. so my mom was very you know someone that everybody loved you know and mm-hmm. and and we felt loved by her so she wanted to have kids we we were her dream right so we we were something that she lived for and that's why why I can that's somehow I can uh, understand this, all the sacrifices she did for us because as I was telling you, she was never taking, there was no vacation. There was no t- me time. There was no, you know, I go for a week and I'm not there. No, she was always there. You were you her know? everything. And did she ever, yes. did she ever lose it? Did she ever get angry or did she ever, did you ever notice, okay, now she had too much of all of this? Not at us. She used to be angry at my father. Mm-hmm. She used to be angry at at, uh, at her at his mom, I remember some of these these uh, <laughs> instances where she where where my grandma used to, used to say she didn't cook for him, but she would say but uh, then she she would say he was not at home he was doing something else that's not what we have agreed and things like that so yes yes I remember her being very uh, be, being hurt I remember her being also beaten 
as well. Oh no, physically yeah. beaten. Yes. Yeah, it's a hard it's a hard life of women in the Balkans. Yes, it's and a very very harsh culture for women. Absolutely, mm. you expected to meet all the, everyone's everyone's wishes and means and exceed and whatever holiday it is, whatever, I don't know, a festivity it is, you, you know, roll up your sleeves and do bake, cook, clean, prepare, all of that. So you have to exceed on everything. Yeah. Otherwise, you you don't exist, you know, you're like you, people talk about you in the village. But but she was she was a good soul. I don't know. It's like she was, and and she did it, and 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 continued, and kept kept doing it. So I don't remember her being like, oh, this is a hard life. But she said, I remember her saying once, I would leave if I don't have you. I would leave, but I don't have where to take you. You know, mm -hmm. I don't have an opportunity to take you anywhere mm -hmm. with me. So she didn't complain. She, she wasn't complain a complainer because. Because she was not uh, welcomed at her family, you know. As you know, when you, <clears throat> sorry, when you get married, they say like there is no way back, right? Mm -hmm. You you made a decision, so go live with it, right? So that's that's your new family. Figure it out, right? Did they did they dislike your father, or is it just the culture of once the daughter is out of the house? It, she I has think to there take was care. a lot, a lot of disagreement. I think there was a lot of disagreement with with the, with the both families. But uh, on the other hand, that's not something that is talked about. That's that's yeah. that's very weird, and, it, and it's related. It's it's. I think it's it comes with my family. That's unique in that that we don't talk about things. It's a very unique family and very many unique. families don't talk about yeah, things. We just don't talk. <laughs> no. <laughs> but no, but like look look at this. When my mom died. Nobody ever mentioned her anymore from the, my father's family. Mm -hmm. So she, you cannot, you know, that's, that's a very, very, you know, different, you know, approach. When it is like she lived there, of course, you were her child, she, your kids, but, you know, it was a forbidden topic. It, was, it didn't exist, basically. Everybody else around us, you know, told us a little bit of this, a little bit of that about, about my mom, because, you know, mm -hmm. we, we tried to make the picture. I, I mm -hmm. personally tried to, to figure it out and make mm -hmm. that puzzle. But in my family, it was just like, no, there's no way to mm -hmm. talk about that. And I think it's like many reasons, you know, it's like it's it's um, some some way some people for sure felt, uh, you know, a, a regret the way they, you know, treated her uh, mm -hmm. regretful. Some others try to you know explain themselves saying like that's that's how it was, you know, and, 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 and others try to blame her for what has happened to her in her life. Mm -hmm. So uh, but. Um, you know the the. Uh, I wish she did it differently, but uh, how do you think yeah. she could have done it differently? I do, I, that's the point. That's the point. Only leaving us and leaving. That's that was the that was the it, and that's what happened eventually, Anna. Mm -hmm. That's that's how, yeah, how, she it, left how it happened. A, yeah. She left in a different way mm -hmm. because you 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 cannot put up for too long uh, for such uh, yeah all of that at once you know you, you have to have you know some safe haven you know some uh, that's why i'm saying like where were her friends like you know you need to but they were not there right or they were far away her sisters were far away living in europe or some other countries right so they, in life when you know when three things are really hard and then at least you have one one thing or one person that you can rely on to it. So then like, okay, you go somewhere, you charge your batteries, you talk to, you you know. But when you don't have either that and you don't have financial means, Anna. That's okay. why financial yeah. independence is so important. When you don't, mm -hmm. you, you, she, she worked and did everything around the house. So everything was on her shoulders, but she didn't get any financial means to that. Right? And that's why it's, it's so important for us women, you know, that we have, mm -hmm. you know, our our bank accounts now financial means now independence mm. uh, i don't assume bad things but it's really important it's like it's on important. all aspects it's important you feel psychologically very different when you you know you have your bank mm. account and you mm. have you have your ways and means to dispose your uh your wealth and more importantly, in, in I don't know rural areas and areas that uh, are uh, different to 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 the day to these days uh, that are still in thinking like, like that 
uh, uh, 20 or 25 years ago. Mm. Do you have any other lessons you would like to share that you learned from her? We have, she was very fast. <laughs> I like that because my mom was also very fast and she would, you know, and she would tell me like, don't, don't what is it called? Like, don't, don't just hang around, you know, when we would cook exactly. together or something, she was so quick and everything. She's like faster, faster. I learned that from her and there's no relaxing in the kitchen. Um, House always full of guests. Obviously, she loved people and loved yes. hosting people. And people loved her. Yeah, people and people loved, loved her. her. Patience with you kids. It yes. sounds like endless patience with you kids. She really loved you guys. No complaining. But you also learned that a woman needs her financial independence. And and you said, I did everything, everything to be different, to give yourself a different life. Yes. Is there anything else as a lesson or would should we move to what she was not able to teach you? I remember one time in my life I said I will never get married. Mm. And I married relatively early while I was studying. So it's again a conference. Yeah, yeah. I said I will never get married because this doesn't make any sense. I just work, 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 give, give, give. And, and is, is this life? Is this? But I throughout life I... I did, I did things differently and I have a partner in life. Mm. You know, I'm not a servant. Mm. We are partners mm -hmm. in, in life and, and I've been blessed that we have been together for a very long time and, and have now our daughter. But I think, I don't know, it, it sounds weird, but she sacrificed herself in many aspects so that we have seen it, learned it, and all of us are trying to do it better for themselves because mm -hmm. it was the right thing to do. You know, domestic violence should not be anywhere. But it happened, you know, and not being, you know, asked for anything, but just asked to work. It's not partnership, but that was part of her life. So we see it, we have seen it in a real example in front of us unfolding. So we said all of us, the five of us said we don't want that in our life. That's not the way we want to live. And that's I think that's profound because usually you end up, you know, in, in repeating one or the other uh, patterns that you have had through your life. But we said, no, that's wrong. You know, that's not the way to go. Even though if my father has, you know, he's my father and I should respect him. No, no, no. That's wrong. And that's 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 profound for me. That's that's her legacy lives still through us. In everything that we do, it it gets uh, gets reflected. Last week I sat with my uh, aunt and she's my mother's uh, sister. And she said, oh, you have so much of your mom. Oh, the way you, you <laughs> move your hands, the way you put your hair. And I was like, yeah, that's the most beautiful one I can get yeah. from someone. Yeah. Yeah. So did you <laughs> do your brothers are your brothers the same? Are they like this is not what a woman should yes. be like or her yeah. life should be like? Yeah. Yes. Mm. Yes. It's it's no, no none yeah. of us. So we all moved away from that. We don't okay. want it. We don't yeah. like it. Yeah. We don't support yeah. it in our family nor around us. So mm. uh, I'm I'm happy to see that my brothers have their own families, their own mm. kids, uh, and they are doing their their their, their best and we, and that's also part of my mom's legacy, is, you know, we have five very different people, but core values are the same. Mm -hmm. So we will might agree, disagree on this and that point, but the, the core is the, you know, the core principles agreeing. So we always easily come together. And so we don't quarrel about whatever things, but we easily come together. No, oh, that's beautiful. Is there anything else you'd like to, to add? <laughs> Uh, many things, but I think I, I said a lot, you know, <laughs> I, I said a lot. So I love talking about my mom every time I do. Yeah. It's like, it's very yeah. emotional, but it's also very important, very, mm -hmm. very important for me. Mm, you bring her back. Yeah. <laughs> but we really learned a lot from you and from her. I learned a lot because, you know, I think it's very important. We keep reminded over and over again what women's lives used to look like, how far we came, A, but B, what women's lives around the globe still look like. You know, we, yeah. we live in Western countries and your child is in the daycare and you have a job and your university degree. It's easy to forget that 90% of women around the world still live a life we don't want to live. And you know, we have to spread this consciousness and, and empower women all around the globe to to get out of that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. 
Mm. I see it every now and then in my in my village and breaks my heart also with yeah. the young, younger generation because some people some men have not moved away even though I'm, they haven't moved from that you know masculine I can do whatever I want you know it, some some families and I you know it as well have, have broken these cycles and said like no like no like no no not in my generation not in my life not in my family but you always have some people who just feel like they are they they are angry firstly with themselves and with the world and then of course they come and and hit a woman or their mm. wife or you know that's that's that happens you know mm. you still have those and you still have what what's one thing that's the second thing you still have people in the village you know uh, or, and also I think cities as well it's not just like put the whole pressure on on a village cities where people say well that's you know their family matters we should not get involved. I heard that many, many times when I was a kid mm. with other families, like, mm-hmm. really being, you know, I had a hard time, but I, my, my cousins had from, from other family had harder times. Mm. They were thrown out every second night to the street, just like that, because their father got drunk and then just like throw them. Uh, and they, you know, he didn't took care of them just because he didn't want to or whatever. He wanted to show that he's so powerful, or whatever, you know, not because he could not meet them in, but because he wanted to be powerful, you know, mm-hmm. the powerful mm-hmm. guy. Uh, so and the thing is, it's like, OK, that's happening. But the thing is, how do we how do we go around with that? Because we are at the end of the day one community. I cannot look at that and say like, well, you know, but some people can, Anna. And mm-hmm. that's, the, that's a troubling mm-hmm. issue when people say, well, it's not our family. It's, you know, it's not our something that we should all them because that's you know them and you know you know that family they're always like kind of and eh, this and that so they always have some quarrel and they always come get together yeah but expenses of wife uh ending up in the hospital yeah. or yeah. having these problems and that problems mm. health, uh, health issues and kids growing mm. up traumatized and so on mm. so i think we should get involved even though we are growing up with this idea well you know mind your own business violence is not something that should be uh in that category you know, if people want to have kids or not kids and these and that, so it's all of it, just mind them. But violence mm. and, and mistreating uh, should not be like, well, you know, it's their own family. No, no it's it's no. our responsibility as well to get involved and, and, and support because there's imbalance in that relationship. And one yep. side cannot need support. And that's, that's the, we need to show support. And as you said, empowerment, we need to feel like, look, I hear you. I see you, even though I'm sitting in Vienna, even though, you know, you might think, oh, well, she has everything figured out. Well, yes, I do. But I do know how it has been, been in, in that, those shoes. And I did try to my life to, you know, get involved in different associations, being mm-hmm. a mentor, mm-hmm. going out, giving talks, speeches, like really trying, you know, to uh, say it, uh, you know, bring my voice out there, bring my support, bring my, uh, you know, invest my time in, in the young people so that they know, you know, that there are others who are listening to them, even though they yeah. come from, yeah. I don't know, yeah. small village somewhere yeah. and they think that their voice doesn't matter. Mm. And it's education. I think we really need to educate women. We need to educate and empower women while they're still in schools and teach them that there's show them that there are other ways and what's yeah. right and what's wrong and what they should should and should not allow in their lives yeah 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 and we yeah. need to be there yeah. as a support so there must yeah. be a support Absolutely. network yeah. and you remember my mom said that i would leave i don't accept but she it but where know. do i go yeah. where does she where go? do yeah. i go anna yeah you know, it's not just the words, but there has to be actions as well. Yeah. There has to be yeah. safe houses and safe places safe houses, and safe yeah. communities that people have the access to it. And yeah. we should not women be questioned for everything and be like asked, well, it's only once. He only hit you once. So like, mm. you know what I mean? So there's, yeah. there's a lot of yeah. things that we have to clean up uh, and, yeah. and, and try heal. I would say heal. Heal. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Adela, thank you so much for this very, very deep and powerful conversation i have a lot to think about now thank you for staying with me through all the whole conversation and allowing me the space to share a little bit grieve a little bit memory yeah have some beautiful memories to share mm-hmm. with your audience and uh, yeah thank you for sharing your mom with us oh thank and you and her life thank because you. it really is a great reminder of there's still a lot of work to do true mm-hmm. true Thank you, Adela. Thank you, Anna. Thank you so much. If you enjoy Thank You Mama and want to help it grow, 
please take the two seconds to leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. It really helps. If you'd like to get in touch, you can send me a mail at info at thankyoumama.net. You can also find me on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter under Anna Tider, that's T-A-J-D-E-R. This was Thank You Mama. Come back next week, subscribe and tell your friends. <laughs>